So from a biology perspective, a lot of the data presented at the moment is really looking at why patients may respond to treatment, but also why patients may not respond to treatment. And much of that is concentrated around those immune therapies, so therapies such as the antibodies and the CAR T cells. And we know that myeloma cells are very good at hiding from the patient's immune system. And so um, the um, researchers are trying to figure out why they're good at hiding from the immune system and what we can learn from that. And so they've been looking at just single cells from a patient's bone marrow and looking at the normal cells and the abnormal cells to try and get an idea of this from patients before they've received therapy and then after they've received therapy. And what they've been able to show is that as patients receive some of these therapies, the myeloma cell can downregulate and can switch itself off so that the therapy no longer works, but it can also persuade some of the normal cells to switch themselves off so they no longer do the jobs as well. So at the moment, it's all very early data, and it probably is not going to translate to the clinic for a good few years. But the eventual idea would be that we might be able to have some ideas about which patients should be able to receive therapies, but also why the therapies don't work in some patients and how we might be able to get around that. So when we bring a new drug into the clinic, we know a reasonable amount about it but often we don't know which patient is going to be the best patient to receive that drug. Or indeed, if we've got a choice of four drugs, which patient should have which of those four drugs? And so these um, studies that the research are doing, either using cell lines or using actual patient cells, are so important because they help us to learn those finer details about the best way to use the drugs. And if we don't have that, we're not going to make that progress we need to, um, need to make. So um, as far as our group is concerned, we um, have a special interest in the um, genetics of myeloma and what makes a myeloma cell different from other um, myeloma cells. And we've been particularly looking at the differences between a younger patient and an older patient with respect to their myeloma. And so we've been showing some differences in, in the way that those cells are able to grow and to survive. We've also been looking a little bit about why a smoldering patient who's had myeloma stable for many years might go on and develop full-blown disease. And again, it's very complicated data, but we can certainly see that some of the processes in the myeloma cell go wrong when a patient goes from having very stable disease to having um, aggressive myeloma. And so we're excited about that data because what we hope we'll be able to do is that eventually we'll be able to either predict who's going to move on and progress or indeed be able to get better treatments for those patients that do go on and progress.